This, this is horrible. <laughs> Why did I pick today of all days <laughs> to, to turn it this hard? <laughs> So great, Fina. It reminds me of Debbie here in Harrisburg. It reminds me of an old boot. <laughs> Just like a really old boot. Ready? Yeah! Oh. Hi! Wait, 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 wait. Sorry. Oh, you're very warm. <laughs> Hi, I'm the British lady who hates time. A <laughs> clock destroyer. Trixie Mattel. <laughs> Slow cooking. The <laughs> crock destroyer. The crock the destroyer. destroyer. Yes. Oh, that's <gasps> funny. Oh my god. Oh my god. I'm that bitch in your room cutting up your dresses at night. The <laughs> crock destroyer. Trixie <laughs> Mattel. Oh my god. <laughs> who are you? God. Um, I'm the I'm the person who insists that you wear flip flops. The sock destroyer. <laughs> nope. nope. Um, um. Do you remember when that bug landed on my lip? Right on your lip. <laughs> it went in my mouth. Yeah, and you. <sighs> that bug lived here for months. Anyway, welcome to uh, the show where we talk about whatever we want. Because it's our show. And not yours. Impulse, 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 impulse. At your age, <laughs> do you go to the doctor or is it sort of like. I, I, What's the point? <laughs> it's, a, it's just a matter of time. When you go to the doctor, I think it's the beginning of Jurassic Park where they're brushing off bones. And then a helicopter comes by and they're like, cover it, cover it! No, every time I walk into the, the waiting room, the receptionist is like, life finds a way. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, doctors, a rich people's game? Kind of. Totally. In yeah. this economy, in this country, they're always like, go. Don't wait. But when you go, no. it's never anything. Nope. I went what do they tell me? You have uh, very white eyes and your lashes are long. <laughs> we should actually get a doctor in here because... Yeah, I could, I could probably have a lot of unanswered questions. <laughs> oh! I went... You ever try to make a dermatology appointment? Bitch! Can't uh, do it. Can't, months. Oh, you can't months. do it. Yeah, you can't do it. You're like, well, can I just get a cream? Can I get a cream? Cream. You have a cream. Cream. I was afflicted with this flesh-eating rash-like thing on my face. And I was, I was in the parking lot of the hospital crying because I just got fired from a job on the phone. What job was that? Um, I worked at a tea shop and then I got um, wrongly accused of stealing from a secret lesbian. Stealing so tea? Money. Work. Then I went on to steal from my next job. <laughs> <laughs> Plot <laughs> twist, you're yeah. like, that's not who I am. Yes. Anyway, are you hiring? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And do you have an open register? <laughs> yeah. I have been to the doctor a lot because of drag related things. Where like, I get home from drag race and my nails are like all disgusting. And the doctor's like, oh, um, why don't you try respecting your body? <laughs> do you think it's important for gay people to have gay doctors? Uh, Cause you know, gays are like, can you, who's your gay doctor? Yeah. I was we, Cause we do things. Yeah, we do. Like, hey, uh, I have a chemical burn from the spiral perm. Yep. And a uh, gaping uh, a person stuck in my ass. <laughs> when I was in college, I bet you I wasn't going to the doctor. I'm not going to the university clinic. No. To have enough to wait three hours for another student to tell me to take a Claritin because my leg fell off. You know what I mean? The jig was up when I realized that every doctor I had was like a third year resident. It not like it was almost like um, a child putting on his dad's suit. Do you know what I mean? Like, like, like one day you looked and you realized it was three Pomeranians stuck <laughs> yeah, each other in a, in a doctor's coat. coat. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it is important to be a little careful. Go to a real doctor. For example, in West Hollywood, there are doctors where they've asked me to crawl up on a table that's a card table. And I'm like, I'm never coming back. Could you at least clean the poker chips off the table before I get here? <laughs> it's like, oh, you can go ahead and uh, just throw, but try to do it sexy. I hate getting like blood tests anything because I always expect the worst. I do, but it's a fun, like, strategy. Have you been tested? Yeah. I, I love getting, like, anything that's going to have results that come in the mail or on the phone. Like, I love that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like the, Why? Like, SATs or AP scores or STI screenings. Like, I just love 
I'm just like, I can't wait to see what happens. You know what I mean? You are alone in that because <laughs> I think a lot of people don't get tested because they're afraid of it coming back positive. That kind of horrific news or like these like tragic um, sort of death sentence kind of things, they really excite me. Because they, <laughs> I can deal Maybe with honestly, that. Honestly, for you, you're like, is that a way out? <laughs> yes. Oh my God. Like, I just need an excuse. <laughs> you're like, give, give, me give, me some, give my story some punctuation, <laughs> yeah. please. Yeah, I feel like I could deal with something like that really well. Well, you're in your mid to late 40s, which gives you a little more perspective. Yeah. You know, I've been seasoned by the sands of time. Gay people are like, I'm really sexually active, but nothing bad will ever happen to me. Right. Yeah. It's like, guess what, Linda? Yeah. I can smell the cancer from here. Yeah, because sex gives you cancer. It doesn't? Well, how did you get cancer when no one's ever f***ed you? <laughs> you sack of rest of potatoes. You sack of I don't implicitly trust doctors because I know how lazy people are. But do you think they went through eight years of medical schooling to be lazy? No, they would go for, for the money. No way, bitch. Yeah. Doctors do not make this money. <laughs> doctors do not make this money. Give me a doctor! Doctors do not make that much money. They make a lot of money. Not more than us. Well, wait a minute. Are there like Christian doctors where they're like, <laughs> I'd recommend, um, oh. I would recommend uh, two acetaminophen and a prayer. Yeah, Christian scientists. No. Yeah, the, power, the healing power of prayer. Pick a lane. Yeah, I know. Do you know what I mean? Remember I when know. you were either a science person or a God person? Yeah. Christian scientists, that makes me think of like Jesus in like eighth grade lab goggles. <laughs> like, and then it goes, poof, Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, a lot of people die because prayer doesn't, um, pray. it, it's weird because prayer is not a really adequate substitute for antibiotics. I was watching this program and this woman had cancer and she believed that her urine would cure her cancer. And she would pee in a cup, she would pee in a shot glass. You're not ready. I need you to stay here. You can't run out of frame. Did she put it in her eye? Yes. She held it up to her eye and she would hold it up to this guy and then open her eye and let the urine go in her eyeball. She would also bathe in the urine. And she was like, cancer? <laughs> I've got pee, thank you. <laughs> like, what is that? She's a piss queen looking for a way out. That's really, that's that's wretched. Also, that's what I'm saying. A doctor would intervene. Yeah, they'd tell her to booty bump it. <laughs> it was like <laughs> spitting you. Just spit. <laughs> um, did you spit on my face? I think I did. You I think you face. would. <laughs> <laughs> I remember I was in a a research study when they were doing a. HPV for men <laughs> vaccine. He had to ask me all these really personal questions, like a sexual inventory that's like, you know, you're in a gang bang, you're getting raw dog, like what's the, like very specific details. It's yeah. just like over and over and over. Did crazy. the doctor use the words, are you getting raw dog? <laughs> <laughs> he was like. He had a clipboard <laughs> and he had a monocle <laughs> and um, raw dogging. Raw dogging. <laughs> Frequency? Yeah, okay. I, it, everything was going great. And it was like a one hour it interview. It like everything in your life was going great. <laughs> Considering you were taking time out of your schedule to be a test subject for HPV. Everything was going great. I felt my call. I was broke and desperate, but, um, but then it came to the part where they got to get some uh, cultures. So they went to art museums. <laughs> art museum. Concerts, yeah. yes. The library. Shh. Um, have you ever seen those giant um, long Q-tips? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? So they had to take some swabs from my rectum. Yeah. Yeah. And they let said, me tell you. No. <laughs> they were three wet ones and three dry ones. Before like, the Q-tip? Uh, <laughs> you pushed out three wet ones. <laughs> and then a dry one, which is like cat food. Dry a cat pellets. A pot of cone. A pot of <laughs> a paper mache doll. Okay, so wait, he shoved three dry ones in separately. So, but he didn't say like, you know, usually doctors like this, this is how this is gonna feel. This is, you know, like when you're gonna, you're gonna feel a pinch, blah, blah, blah. you just- No warning. No information. He took the thing and it was like, it turned into like sleepaway camp three. He just shoved it up my ass and then like, I swear to God he had this rotate. Oh, sorry. I was he was in like full shock. Tina Turner, like rolling, <laughs> yeah, rolling. rolling. Yeah. Dry. It was. I thought that my. 
ass was, like, was he mangled. Was, he was crochet hooking your, your intestine. I felt like he was exploring a vendetta that was like 20 years old. Like he, he was, was looking for his keys. Yeah, it was, just, it was, I was so horrified. And I, I figured, okay, there must be blood everywhere. I must have just like. You were ready for like full red yeah, wedding. Yeah, was, oh, this is like, this, this is useless now. That's pretty much it. Oh, then he put a finger in and it felt like, it felt great. Well, it was, that was just goes to show you, don't date a guy who has Q-tip fingers. <laughs> that thing, he broke one off in my friend's ass. <laughs> he broke one off in his ass. That it broke in half. He was in the same study. And it broke off his ass. Ah! No! Yeah. You know they say I'm gonna break my stuff in your or whatever. Yeah, they do say that. Yeah. Hi, this is Dr. Katya. I'm not a real doctor, but I am a PhD student in archaeology, and I'm also a hypochondriac. Self-image. Oh, I got a question for you. Tell me. Do you believe in yourself? Yes, of course. Why do you say of course? I have a debilitatingly positive self-image. You believe in yourself you know so how much you can have, like, the house? body dysmorphia? Yeah. Where they're like real thin and they're like, God, I'm disgusting. <laughs> I'm at my worst and I'm like, ah! Like, you can't tell me anything. But I also think we should all feel like that. Think of it this way. Whatever you tell yourself about yourself is kind of like a lie. So you might as well construct a good one. Completely. I've had days uh, where I've woken up, like I'll open my eyes and I'll already be smiling. That is a scary thought. <laughs> like. <laughs> and it's like, it's not, it's not even like, I'm ready to do the day. Me and the day are already like entwined. That's how I felt you know today. I mean? I'm ready to unfurl. Did you feel that today? Uh, no. Okay. 